If there is one complaint that returns to our comment section like a pigeon to its lover, it is this. Why use X blade steel when the far superior Y blade steel is available? To me, this begs the question, is Y really better than X? Let's find out. The world produces hundreds of millions of tons of steel every year, and only a small fraction of a percent ends up in knives. Cars, buildings, roads, and almost every other fixture of modern life depends on steel to keep it all running, and they need a lot of it. Now, if you think knife people are persnickety about steel alloys, you should meet a general contractor. You see, knives and buildings share a problem. Steel is full of trade-offs, and you must choose which traits you're willing to sacrifice in order to optimize others. On knives, choosing poorly can mean rolled edges and broken tips. On buildings, choosing poorly can mean catastrophic failure and the loss of thousands of lives. Both must choose carefully. The American Iron and Steel Institute would love to give contractors a one-size-fits-all steel alloy for every application, and I would love to give you one, but to do so would be at best dishonest, and at worst, dangerous. Knife steels are often measured by three traits. Toughness, or how well it resists breaking under pressure. Wear resistance, or how well it resists material loss when in contact with abrasives. And corrosion resistance, or how well it resists chemical damage and oxidation. Some people will throw edge retention in there, but by my estimation, that's a subcategory of wear resistance. A perfect steel would score top marks in all areas, but a perfect steel does not exist. Instead, you must choose which attributes you want to maximize. Let's suppose you say, I just want a knife that positively will not break no matter what I do. I don't care about corrosion resistance or edge retention. Well, I have an answer for you. If you get a knife made out of A514, it will hold any amount of pressure that you can give it and more. Its day job is holding up buildings in earthquake prone areas. You want maximum corrosion resistance? Alloys of 316 are used on ship propellers with constant exposure to both salt water and air. You want maximum wear resistance? AR500 is the gold standard steel for ballistic applications, taking thousands of direct hits from bullets while barely scratching. Now the extremely knife savvy among you may have noticed that very few knives ever get made with any of these steels. And there's a reason for that. These are all min-maxed steels, and min-maxing works well in some applications, but not very well in knives. To make a knife that will truly satisfy its user, knife companies must choose a steel that offers a balance of these traits. To find out what the best knife steel for you and your job is, it will be a journey of picking up different knives and trying out different steels until you find the one that works best for you. But something tells me that just saying, it depends, buy a bunch of knives and find out what steel is best for you is not the answer you came looking for. So, with the aforementioned caveat that this is a very complicated subject and there is no such thing as one best blade steel, here are some of my recommendations for you. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to inform you that less than half of the people watching this video are subscribed to Blade HQ. We invite you to click that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all the coolest in the sharp and pointy world that is coming out today. And with that, back to the video. If it's toughness you're after, CPM3V is a good choice. Designed for high impact applications, this steel can take chopping, batoning, and whatever other crazy stuff you're doing. And with a healthy dose of chromium in the mix, it can handle some moisture too. Now if you'd rather a true stainless, 12C27 offers even more toughness than 3V, however it leaves a lot to be desired in the edge retention department. If you'd rather maximize edge retention, I would recommend Maximit. Thanks to an incredibly high carbide volume, this steel can reach insane levels of hardness and will resist wear long after many steels have gone dull. At those hardness levels, Maximit can get pretty brittle, but it's not glass-like. It doesn't belong on a chopper, but it can handle the odd staple in cardboard. If you can sacrifice that toughness, CPM S90V will give you great edge retention with the addition of being a true stainless. If you spend a lot of time around salt water and need corrosion resistance, H2 will suit your fancy. With unmatched corrosion resistance, H2 will stand up to whatever chemicals you can expose it to and never show a spot of rust. With unmatched corrosion resistance, this steel will never show a spot of rust no matter how much salt water you subject it to, and it's pretty tough to boot. Its edge retention isn't great though. If you need more edge retention, try a steel like Vanex, which will offer almost as much corrosion resistance, but will hold its edge fairly long as well. And if you want something that has respectable marks in all categories, CPM Magna Cut is the elephant in the room. It offers solid edge retention, solid corrosion resistance, and solid toughness all in one package. However, even Dr. Laren Thomas, the metallurgist who cooked it up in the first place, would be the first to tell you that there are steels that will outperform Magna Cut in certain areas. 
Now don't forget, the steels we just talked about are all great, but none of them is the best. And even the cheap steels that some of you don't like will outperform them in some areas. The world of knife steel is large and ever growing. And if you want to find the perfect knife steel for you, you don't have to be a professional metallurgist. All it'll take is a little bit of experimentation to find out what works for you and your lifestyle. And who knows, that experimentation could turn into a lifelong knife collecting hobby and even turn you into one of those fun nerds that likes to test knife steels in their yard. So is Y really better than X? No, but it is meaningfully different and it offers traits that you may prefer over the traits that X offers. And holding that opinion is your God-given right. However, knife makers hold the same right that you do, and all too often, they disagree with you and me. But don't worry too much. Very few of us are ever using our knives hard enough and long enough to actually ask much of our blade steels. And even if we did, steel is not the biggest contributor to how your knife performs. Edge geometry and grind angles have a lot more to say about how your knife will cut, but that's a story for another day. We'll see you next time.